In this tutorial, we'll be modeling a pencil. We'll start by creating the profile using the Polygon tool. Set the number to 6 to create the hexagon, and we'll use the Circumscribed mode. In the right view, with the grid snap on, draw out the radius of 3 millimeters or the diameter of 6 millimeters, making sure to keep the flat edge of the hexagon along the base as the pencil would sit naturally. We'll also draw the lead of the pencil using the circle. From the same point, draw out a radius of one or a diameter of two. Before generating the solid from this form, we can also fillet the corners to round them out slightly. We'll use the command fillet corners, select the curve, press enter, and we'll set the radius to 0.5. This rounds out the corners as the pencil would actually be made. We'll create the solid form by using Extrude Planar Curve in the Solid menu, Straight, select both profiles, and extend out from the center, both sides creating a solid. The total length should be about 15 to 18 centimeters. This creates the wooden portion of the pencil and ends up being hollow. We'll now access that curve and repeat that extrude to create the lead portion of the pencil. For this I'm going to extend a little bit further out just so we can see the two pieces and I'll slide it over in line on the right side. Instead of modeling the point what we're going to do is we're going to cut away from these pieces as you would sharpen a pencil. Use the line tool, choose a point just inside, snapping in to that center line, and then create the desired angle. This curve will be revolved around that central axis with the grid snap on, choose a point in along that center, and extend out holding the shift key. We'll revolve a full circle or 360 degrees. This cutaway will create that scalloped edge. To create the cuts, in the solid menu, we'll use Boolean Split. I'll select both the wood and the lead of the pencil, and we'll select Delete Input. The cutting surface will be that cone. It's difficult to see what's happened. Parts have been cut away, and now we'll just have to remove the parts that we no longer need. We're left with the wood and the lead. Both are solid objects. We'll now move to the back of the pencil and create the metal piece that attaches the race. We'll now move to the back of the pencil to create the metal piece that attaches the eraser. For the metal piece, we'll use the line tool, overlapping it at the bottom of the pencil by about seven or eight millimeters, and we'll extend out to about 15 millimeters. This will create the inside of the metal piece. We'll also put a curve in place to create the outside. For that, I'll use an offset, and I'll offset to the outside by a distance of 0.4 millimeters. This creates a second curve just below the bottom of the pencil. To create the ridges, I'm going to use Rebuild in the Edit menu to add more points to the curve. The point count will change to 36, and the degree will change to 2. For this, it's easier to turn off the gumball, leaving the first two points, and then selecting every second point thereafter. I'll do a similar selection in and along the other side, choosing how many ridges are going to be created. Here, we'll end up with six on each side. That also leaves a flatter space in the middle. I'll turn the gumball back on, using the Move tool, 
from one of these points will move 0.3 millimeters towards the bottom. Make sure, holding down the shift key, that you do it straight. This creates the ridged metal parts. For this to end up as a solid, we also need to close these curves. I'll use blend curves, the adjustable curve blend, selecting one and then the other. I'll say OK. At the bottom, we'll use another straight line to join from this point straight across to this. Don't forget to select both curves and join them together. While we're here, I'll also use the control point curve to create the eraser. I can go in just along the inside, putting down a couple of points, and then shaping the end of the eraser. To close it off, I'll use the line tool at the bottom, snap into the point, and go straight up to the middle. Join these two together so that we have another profile that can also be revolved to create the eraser. In the surface menu, I'll use Revolve, selecting both the metal clip and the eraser. The axis runs along the center, creating a full circle. Finally, we can use the metal clip to cut away from the back of the pencil. This will be a Boolean difference. Subtracting from the pencil and press enter. Normally when doing a Boolean, you'll want to delete the input, but in this case we do want to keep the metal piece. So you can turn off delete input. The surface to subtract from will be the metal clip and press enter. And now we can see that the pencil has been shaved away similar to what an actual pencil would be. I'll move that back into place and the pencil is complete. As a final step, we'll add some lettering to the back of the pencil. For this, we'll use the text object command. I'll set it to a height of two millimeters and you can choose the appropriate font. Type in your text. The output will be solids and the thickness will generally be one and we can output as a group. I'll apply this in the top view so that it rests on the flat portion of the pencil. I can also be sure to align this to the center of the pencil by using the Align tool along the horizontal center and snapping into the center. It was fairly close, but we just need to be sure that it's exactly centered. In the right view or in the front view, we can also align the text so that it sits directly at the bottom, resting on top of the pencil. With it positioned here, we can now set the depth. By clicking on the gumball, we can move it back the desired depth which in this case would only be about 0.2 or 0.25 millimeters. Mention the direction, either positive or negative. In this case, we're going back negative 0.25. We can now use Boolean difference, deleting the input, cutting away with the text. 